To kick it off, my name is Barry Rapkin. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Identified Technologies. Um, a little bit about my background. I've started and sold two tech companies. I've, I've done brand management for Heinz and Arida. And uh, I'm a Pittsburgh boy. Uh, went to the Carnegie Mellon Tepper School of Business. Um, I didn't know a huge amount about robotics before starting here, and it was really the uh, the cutting edge technology and, and the opportunities I saw that, that brought me here. Um, we've been featured by TEDx, NBC, CNN, Inc., the Pittsburgh Business Times, UAS Magazine, TechCrunch, South, South by Southwest, and many more. And uh, what I'd like to do today is just tell you a little bit about uh, some of the applications for drones on industrial job sites and uh, give you some advice on sort of what mistakes not to make and uh, common issues to avoid. So the full agenda for the day, I'm gonna take you through just some drone basics, talk to you about how drones are benefiting your industry specifically, what the most common drone issues are and how to avoid them. I'm gonna briefly touch on a case study where we recently helped a client in a very competitive market increase their site survey speed 200 times and update 60 times more frequently while cutting their costs by 30%. And then I'm going to turn it over to uh, my partner, Jeff Black, who's our um, senior business consultant, and he's going to um, field Q&A. So if as I'm going through this, you have any questions at all, feel free. There, there's a Q&A button at the top. Uh, post in any questions you want. and uh, We'll, we'll just kind of pile them up and then Jeff will address them all at the end. And if you make it the whole way through the webinar, it should be about 20, 30 minutes, then we have a special limited time offer um, that's only going to be available for our live attendees. So just, just so you're aware. All right. So first off, where did we get to modern drones? Why are they so hot? Well, what's, what's all the fire about? Well, in the past, we had RC planes and helicopters. We've had them for decades. Uh, if you look at that picture on the right, that's pretty clearly the 80s. You, you can tell right from the, the jeans and the hair. So we've had them. Why are drones so hot today? Well, the problem with the model airplanes and RC uh, helicopters of a few decades ago was this. This image shows what most people experienced when they tried RC uh, devices. They were extremely hard to fly, made from really cheap parts. Uh, they're all purely you know, manual. And unfortunately, even if you actually could uh, manage to, to use them, well, unfortunately, you couldn't do much with them. Um, there, there weren't cameras small enough that you could include. And uh, th there just weren't many applications once you, once you actually had one. Um, so what changed? Why is there such a sudden, massive interest in drones? A lot of different technologies came together to make it happen. Both the government and private sector brought in a, a host of innovations that uh, allowed modern drone technology. NASA came out with unbelievable flight controllers that uh, gave a, a level of control and precision that was never before possible on anything other than a, a massive multi you know, billion dollar project. Uh, miniaturized sensors, the same kind of accelerometers that most of us have in our smartphones, uh, give the device full information on its exact status, where it is and how it's doing. Uh, GPS coordinates from the United States Navy. Many of us have these in our cars and uh, using GPS devices uh, makes it much, much easier uh, for for the device to actually find its coordinates and steer itself. This all combined with modern digital cameras, the same style that you see on a, on a GoPro or a Hero, and, uh, and old traditional model aircrafts all come together to make modern drones as we know them today. A drone can mean a lot of things. It can be something as high tech and powerful as uh, you know an almost hundred million dollar global hawk like a Northrop Grumman's, and that is unbelievably powerful. It can fly up to about 360 miles per hour. 
Um, it, it's really just a full plane that, that's autonomous um, and, and doesn't have a pilot on board. Um, and then on the, the far low end, if you're just an amateur and you, you want something to snap a couple of pictures, DJI makes a Phantom Vision drone for about $1,300 that uh, does a nice work. You're seeing drones used in a wide variety of applications, everything from real estate, uh, just to snap overhead aerials and shots, to uh, sports. You're also seeing them in movies and commercials. Previously, all these shots would have only been possible with a helicopter or, or a very expensive plane going overhead. Now, with a fairly attainable device, you can take shots that would never have otherwise been possible. Unfortunately, to use this for data collection for industrial job sites, it's still not, uh, not easy. Uh, there's a lack of consistency and a lack of accuracy. The drone has to be kept at the exact same height the whole time to capture data uh, consistently, and it has to be flown the exact same path every time without missing any spots. Uh, to do that for even a trained pilot is incredibly difficult, and uh, without a lot of training, it's possible. Modern flight controller software has changed that. Now, with the technology that we use, all you have to do is select the perimeter of the area that you want to control, and it will give you accurate and consistent data collection. That means no missed spots, the same height every time. It'll never stray from the path to hit a, uh, uh, an obstacle, and completely accurate, repeatable, precise data that you don't even need a pilot to give you. These are being used in a variety of industries. Agriculture, construction, energy, landfills, mining, mapping, and surveying. And they're particularly powerful when you either need consistently repeated data or uh, areas that you don't necessarily want to send a person. Um, you know, landfills are a perfect example. Any kind of particularly dangerous job site where someone might not really want to go. Many people think all drones can give you are just photos and videos. The truth is, you can automate advanced surveying, mapping, and monitoring with these devices. So after they do a scan, you can very easily tell 2D distance measurements. Um, maybe that's to tell the gap between buildings or the actual uh, size of it. Um, you can do 3D volumetric analysis. And I'll, I'll talk more about this later, but that means you can actually see the peaks and valleys of an area. If you're doing an earth moving project, you can know exactly uh, what you're going to need to to do, how long it's going to take. You can chart progress over time. Um, if you're a mine, you can actually see your aggregate piles and know exactly what, what inventory you have on hand. For 3D point clouds, um, they can capture that. And we can also do contour line maps to give you elevations. We offer digital surface models, DSMs, ortho mosaic overlays. Um, one of our most powerful tools is being able to offer site risk prevention and response. That means you can constantly monitor and check in on your assets and make sure that they're in top quality, that there's no issues that need to be dealt with, uh, no potential safety hazards, um, and just checking the general assets on, on a site to know exactly what you have and how it's doing. Um, many uh, different industrial uh, purposes have to be monitored just by regulation. And this way, you don't have to send someone out manually. You can get constant, near real-time updates. And we also allow as-built overlays. So you can take an architectural plan and map that over the real job site and see how you're doing, comparing uh, as-built to, to as-planned, and uh, kind of keep your customers and business partners on the same page and aware of the current progress and avoid any misunderstandings. In the very near future, um, we're going to be mass releasing um, gas detection and methane options, multispectral options, and thermal imaging options. Uh, we're already doing testing with this now and seeing great feedback from our customers. And uh, this is going to empower a lot of new options, both for industrial and manufacturing sites, um, and also anything having to do with uh, pipelines. The challenges of drones aren't only in operating them and, and steering them. 
It's also in the uh, dealing with the maintenance. So unfortunately, drone batteries don't last very long. Um, a normal drone battery lasts for about 20 minutes. And that might sound OK, but it's not a one way trip. You want it to be able to come back. And if you run out of juice uh, before that happens, you're going to crash and, and your drone will be damaged. So if you have a 20 minute battery life, call it a minute of that is takeoff. A minute of that is landing. That gets you down to about 18 minutes. And then when you cut that in half for the flight out or flight back, you only really have about a nine minute range. So you have to spend a lot of time swapping out batteries, which is uh, made even worse because normally this is done manually and batteries can explode, which is really not a great place to be. If drones sound good and you like the kind of data that, that you can get from them, it's important that you understand what the steps are if you want to manually operate a drone. You need to either train yourself or your staff in drone safety, uh, drone flight, and all the FAA regulations. You need to file for and receive an FAA Section 333 approval. You need to source and purchase safety insurance. You need to buy or design the correct drone for your specific needs. You need to select the area you want to scan. You need to charge the battery. You need to take off. You need to perfectly steer the drone and keep absolutely level out altitude the entire flight. You'll need to repeatedly land the drone, swap the battery, and charge the batteries again, repeating that until the job is done. Finally, you'll need to download the data, buy or design the correct software to analyze your data, analyze it, interpret it, act on your insights, properly maintain the units the whole time, and you're going to have to buy new drones if it malfunctions, is damaged, or lost. If you use identified technologies, you have two steps. You have to select the area that you want to scan. You have to act on the insights of the data. We take care of everything else with our full turnkey system. I'm going to show a quick video showing how our technology works just to demonstrate it. And then I'll go back to the overall webinar. Perfect. So you just got to see our technology, how we can actually swap out the batteries without you having to touch them, collect the data, take off the drone, scan the area, land the drone, uh, upload the data to the cloud in a completely hands-off turnkey process. And one of the best things about this is really um, how scalable it is. Instead of having to, in each region, uh, try to source talent, uh, train people and get them up to speed. This way, you just put one of these on the site and you're ready to go. And these can scale from dozens or even thousands of job sites. 
some feedback that we got from one of our partners. We had outdated topographical maps when we budgeted for our earthwork on site. Our estimates were 20% off in the wrong direction. We were the ones that had to absorb that risk and error. I wish we had identified technologies data before we started. That's from John Mackin, a site manager at Mascaro Construction. And we see this again and again. People are given um, old data, uh, obsolete data, <laughs> and they have to do their best with it, but it can cause some pretty serious cost overruns and, uh, and miss deadlines. Um, so we, we try to give people the information they need to make smart decisions. This is a really quick case study of a job site that we did in Wampum, PA. The project area was 131 acres, the flight time was 13 minutes, and the data output was over 10 million data points. This was their stockpile, and uh, as you can see here, we were very quickly able to bring them back full data on, on the amount that, that they had in each one. Um, they could work with their customers to know exactly what they could offer them, and uh, well before they had to just kind of guess. Sometimes they would sell stuff they didn't actually have. <laughs> Here they, they got uh, near real-time updates on their actual on-hand inventory. And they did it very quickly, uh, very safely, without having, having to put any of their staff at risk. Talking to them, um, our survey speed ran about 200 times faster than their normal manual collection. And they can run it 60 times more frequently, which cuts their cost by about 30%. Um, the accurate current data means that they can do better work and they can make decisions without having any unpleasant surprises. So Jeff um, is our senior business consultant. Um, he, he knows the stuff forward and backwards. And part of sort of our way to thank you for joining us today is you're going to get a free 15-minute uh, session with him if you'd like one. So if you want to talk more to him about how we can help you or if identified technologies or self-piloting drone systems might be a good match for your business, please sign up. It's, uh, this is the website. It's https colon backslash backslash black dot you can book me. And uh, if you go there, you can sign up for a 15-minute session. And he'll be really happy to just talk to you about what your needs are and if we'd be a good fit. Now, he actually just gave me the thumbs up to take the Q&A. So I'm going to uh, ask you to please, uh, I'm going to get a glass of water. And if you guys can go to the Q&A tab at the top, click it, and start submitting questions, I'll go through and I'll be happy to answer um, some of just the common questions that we get. And then for anything uh, a little bit more advanced, you, you can talk to the expert, uh, Jeff. So please uh, submit your questions now. I'll give it just a few more seconds and then I'll start answering questions. Uh, if you have any, please feel free to keep them coming. All right, great. So our first question is from Richard. Um, great presentation. Hey, thank you very much. Um, he said, battery swapping is a huge advantage to identify. What's your strategy when your competitors solve this problem 
and bring this to market? Very fair question. So our technology goes pretty far beyond battery swapping. Um, I'll take a minute and actually bring up our website just so I can share a little bit more about what our technology is and, and what makes us special. So our system has two main parts. We have our actual drone. We call it the boomerang because basically you throw it and it automatically comes back. And uh, that has the technology that it uses is called ATOC, Automatic Takeoff, Aviation, and Landing Interlink. Uh, it's a pretty small device. We can scan both 2D and 3D maps. It's weather resistant. Um, you get the data in near real time. It's very efficient. It has self-preservation, so if its GPS signal cuts out, it automatically lands without any harm to it. And it has a large uh, sight range. Now, the docking station does more than just swap batteries. Uh, not only does it do that and charge them, um, it's also got a very tough exterior. It's, it's safe for any industrial site. Um, we actually have designed a proprietary intelligent battery management system. If you're continually charging, uh, multiple batteries, they'll slowly power down and their lifetime will, will uh, decrease. Um, what we do extends the lifetime of each battery to uh, the maximum. Um, and we include a large holster of batteries so, so you can continuously run through them even if you need to do uh, five batteries in a row. Um, but even beyond that, the beauty of our stuff is really the back end. Um, our, our customer portal lets you access all this and, and analyze it. So not the data is only as good as, as what you can do with it and uh, how you can share it securely with, with your clients and partners, how you can make um, strong decisions and insights off of it. So um, that is probably what sets it apart more than anything. And I mentioned earlier that we're doing um, some site risk avoidance technology. So you can start to actually flag uh, you know what, we scanned this last week, we scanned it the week before, and we're starting to see warning signs that maybe this is going to be an issue and it needs to be treated. Uh, so beyond things that just have to be monitored uh, for regulatory reasons, we can keep an eye on any um, anything you want and give you constant updates uh, that, that will actually flag issues before they become real problems. So thank you, Richard. Uh, the next question is from Kevin. The question is, once the customers have the data, how do they absorb it? Is it via reports? Are they able to query the data set to find out answers to their specific questions? Um, so they're actually going to get the full topographical uh, data so that they can run any kind of very specific questions they want, whether it's measuring uh, different areas, um, whether vertical or, uh, or horizontal. Um, doing different uh, mapping styles, whether it's contour maps or, or looking for gas leaks or anything else. Um, you don't have to ask us. You, the the data is all there ready for you to, to manipulate and, uh, and analyze however you need to. Um, so thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, please keep the questions coming. Uh, one pretty common question we get is what happens if the drone is damaged uh, through no fault of, of your own as a customer. So um, if you get a normal drone and something goes wrong, uh, you're steering it and you hit a tree, uh, the wiring freaks out and it just flies off, um, you're out of luck. Uh, if you just spent $50,000 on a drone, $50,000 just flew away. Um, we're different. And if you work with us, if a drone is damaged through no fault, we're going to overnight one to you uh, the next day. So. You know, it shouldn't cause any significant delay in work. Um, we eat the cost, and uh, you can have more or less uninterrupted workflow. Um, when you compare that to scheduling, let's say, a, a helicopter aerial survey that, that may take six or eight weeks just to book, uh, we, we feel pretty strongly that there's a value to that, and we want to make sure that you're taken care of and you're able to get the fast, fast data you need. Um, when the question uh, comes up, what is the advantage of getting the information faster? Well, if you're working with old data, you're working with wrong data. Job sites, when they're busier, are changing every day. 
And if you want to make accurate projections on how fast something is going to be done, how long it's going to take, how much it's going to cost, how much staff you need, you have to know what the current condition of the site is. And again, instead of getting updates every month, or in some cases, every few months, we can offer it ideally every day. Um, although many of our customers find that once a, once a week is, is adequate, but that's still uh, many, many times more frequent than uh, was done previously. A very, very frequent question for us is how accurate is the data? Well, we're, we're near LiDAR accuracy. We're within about 1% of LiDAR. And uh, we can turn it around much faster and uh, at a much lower cost. And um, virtually all of our clients have found that as long as you're within about 1% of that industry standard, you're good. There's no real benefit uh, to, to, to be any more accurate than that. In fact, some of our clients find that uh, they just need to be within about a half foot. Uh, so for, for us, we're getting really sub centimeter accuracy. So that's no problem. So an, another question we got is, um, can, can you get a certificate just to show that you participated in this event and uh, to, to get credit for it? And we'll include that. Um, once, once we complete this, I'll be sending out a, uh, an email a little bit later today. And that will include a certificate of completion. And if, again, if you have any questions or you'd like any follow-up, um, please feel free to contact us. at the for the 15 minute consultation that I have up on the screen and Jeff will be happy to talk to you in more detail and answer any specific questions you have. The question came up um, how much money can identify technology save me? Awesome question. <laughs> uh, that's really going to depend on your specific job site. Uh, if you're used to paying a staff of two or even four surveyors to go out um, regularly or potentially to, to charter helicopters or airplanes to fly your site, um, that can add up really, really quick. Uh, it's not uncommon to see for aerial surveys about $10,000 per, um, and, and that's with a long delay. And survey teams can easily cost you know, uh, $1,000 a week. So we find, though, that not only do people save uh, compared to the other services that they would have to use uh, to collect the data, but actually their greatest savings come from being able to make smarter decisions, from being able to acquire more customers because they have something unique that they can offer that, that their competitors don't, and, uh, and being able to share data in near real time to keep them constantly updated. Um, just does a lot to set customers at ease and give them a reason to use you instead of a competitor. And um, and then the, the last way of saving money is just to, to use kind of dashboards for your near real-time data so you can compare different job sites and make informed decisions. You can know exactly what your assets on a site are. You can know exactly uh, how much longer uh, it's going to take to complete a job and if you need to bring in more equipment to hit your deadline. Uh, you can compare different job sites and different uh, suppliers and different contractors to see who's getting the job done fastest and best. Um, and then the last way is, as I mentioned, there's a lot that can be done in terms of uh, site risk prevention uh, that really has a almost a cost beyond measure. Uh, I, I know if you know if pipeline blows, uh, that can be literally hundreds of millions of dollars in damage. And uh, anything we can do to help prevent that is, is very, very valuable to our, our partners, whether in manufacturing, um, energy, or uh, construction. OK, again, some more great questions in here. Thank you very much. Uh, next is from William. The question is, what is the cost of the drone and docking station? In case you lose one with data, can you retrieve it? via GPS location? Awesome, awesome question. So our costs depend on exactly uh, how much area you're going to be covering, how regularly you're covering it, um, but, and, and just sort of how large the job site is. So if you have a little, uh, call it 20-acre job site, and you need scans once a month, that's going to be a very different cost from a 200-acre job site that needs uh, daily updates. Um, so I would just ask that. Um, 
if you talk to Jeff about it, he'll be able to give you a better understanding of the exact cost for your exact needs. Um, but we have all kinds of clients, uh, very, very large um, blue chip energy players um, to some, some smaller uh, groups that just have a few sites and that they're all finding ways to benefit from our service. Um, and we'll try to work with you uh, where, where you are. Uh, the other question was, in case you lose one with data, can you retrieve it via GPS location? Uh, potentially. Um, I mean, if, if the drone just flies off and, and powers down, it'd be hard to track. Um, but if it just flies off, it's likely we would be able to retrieve it and, and retrieve the data. Uh, but worst case, though, um, as I said, we'll overnight you the, another drone set up for, so you'll have it the next morning. So worst case, you just fly the job site over again, and you'd have the data at that point. Kevin asked, what are some future trends you see emerging in the automated drone space? This technology is already cutting edge. I mean, we're able to do things that were impossible even a year ago, um, and it's only going to get better. Uh, I, I, we're, we're working hard now to offer more sensors uh, in areas that we talked about, like gas detection and thermal imaging. Um, and as we are able to offer wider and wider ranges too, it becomes realistic to, to do uh, tracking on massive projects, whether it's you know, hundreds of miles of in infrastructure or uh, you know, hundreds of miles of pipelines. Um, th those become very, very real uh, opportunities. And uh, I would say the, the other biggest area is, it's, I keep coming back to the safety, but I, I think knowing that your assets and that your project is secure being able to check up on it regularly um, whether that's utilities or manufacturing uh, has a real benefit and being able to flag problems before they become real problems uh, is invaluable richard asked how do you geotag your imagery when it's acquired or do you merge it afterwards so currently, we, we geotag it and gather it all and then merge it afterwards. It's not actually merged um, as the data is being scanned. But uh, our current turnaround is basically within a few hours. And, uh, and we found for our customers that that's when they're used to getting data back in, in weeks or months, uh, a few hour turnaround is more than adequate for their needs. Um, we have the question, is your service limited to the U.S. only? Um, it's not. Um, we are very happy to work with partners anywhere in the world. Uh, we are based on the East Coast, uh, proudly in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's a little bit easier for us to meet face-to-face -to -face with anyone in the region, but we're very, very happy to, to talk to anyone. And, and because of our system's uh, autonomy, because they're self-piloting, Theoretically, we, we can send one anywhere, and we're happy to send out a, a team to do anything you need to get your site calibrated and up to speed um, and get you familiar with the technology. So if you're in, uh, if you're in Africa, if you're in China, if you're in Canada, uh, feel free to reach out, and, uh, and we'd love to talk to you. OK. Uh, if anyone else has a question, feel free to send it. If, if not, there's one more I saw. Uh, can I operate the drone in light, rain, or wind? And uh, the answer is yes. Um, you probably wouldn't want to fly it in a tornado, but other than that, you're good. We've tested it in winds up to uh, 33 miles per hour with no problem whatsoever. And, um, and light rain is also fine. Um, they, they have a tough uh, thermoplastic composite exterior. Um, they're, they're very robust and, and up to any normal challenges. Um, so I, I would say short of just not flying in a, in a, in a tornado, uh, you won't have any problems with it. They're, they're built to be job site tough. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, I don't see any more questions. So uh, I would just ask that uh, if, if this was interesting or if you want to explore any uh, future possibilities, please feel free to book your free 15-minute consultation with Jeff at the URL on the screen. Um, I 
I do my best, but he knows uh, really everything there is to know about our, our technology and about the space. Um, and he'd love to be able to talk to you about what we can do for you. And uh, we'll send a follow-up um, that both includes a link uh, for this video if you want to share it with any of your coworkers, and uh, a quick feedback survey. So if there's other topics you'd like to see us cover for the future, uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, you can let us know how we're doing and uh, if there's anything we, we can do to answer your questions or, uh, or address future opportunities. Uh, so with that, I want to thank you all again very, very much for joining us for this webinar. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, speaking to you. Uh, all the questions were great, and I hope we can work with you in the future. Thank you very much.